Hello, hello, welcome back to Midnight Kitchen. Today, we're going to be trying some of the hottest and newest Japanese restaurants in the Seattle and greater Seattle area. Well, are they worth the wait? Let's find out. For the first spot, we're going to check out Tendong Kohaku in Bellevue. They specialize in rice bowls with great tempura. I know it's only 4.15. Will we be at the front of the line and perhaps the first seating? Okay, I know this sounds really promising. Maybe not. The line is already to the sidewalk and growing longer too. It's half an hour before their opening time, which is at 5 p.m. Okay, there's some movement right at 5. 15 minutes later, we're towards the front of the line and can speak to someone about our reservation. Guess what? We'll be seated three hours later in the fourth seating at 8 p.m. Three hours later, we finally got the text and we're back. Let's see if this is worth the wait. The decor is nice and simple, very similar to what we see in Japan. We're getting the bar seating. That means we get to watch chefs in action. For the first dish, we got a mentaiko cream and ikura udon set. Mentaiko is a salted cod roe, ikura is a salmon roe. Okay, mix, mix, mix. Let's give this a try. Okay, it's nice and salty, and that comes from the mentaiko and also salted salmon roe. The creamy element is a surprise and a deviation from what I normally expect with udon, which is a nice, simple, clean broth. The yuzu pickle cabbage is nicely acidic, so very sour, and that is perfect for such a rich dish. The set option comes with a classic miso soup. It is on the salty end for my taste, but that is due to the miso and also the bonito flakes, which is understandable. This is a chawamushi, which is a Japanese egg custard. Overall, I like their use of ingredients. I like the shiitake mushrooms. I wish they used more real seafood. The temperature wise, a little bit overcooked, a little bit too firm, but not too bad. Okay, here comes the highlight. They're known for their tendons, which are rice bowls with tempura, along with a drizzle of savory or spicy sauce. We're going to try the premium tendon set with the eel and a variety of meat, seafood, and vegetable tempuras. Overall, all the elements are well cooked, meaning the interior is moist. It is not overcooked, undercooked, while the outside is nice and crispy. Keep in mind, this batter is going to be thicker and on the crispier side. It is not your traditional airy, light batter. They drizzle quite a bit of sauce all over the tempura. You will have bits of where the sauce made the tempura a little bit soggy. You can taste they're using premium rice here. The individual grains are nicely separated. It is not at all overcooked and mushy. We're fighting for that last bit of eel. It is definitely the best piece and the highlight of this tendon. We're getting the Tencha experience, which is an additional $4 add-on. They provide a variety of condiments from scallions to seaweed to wasabi, and also a pot of savory broth. You pour that over your leftover rice and egg and enjoy everything together.
This is a fried soft boiled egg. That means the interior is still runny. Break the yolk apart and enjoy that with the rice and make sure you add in the condiments. I'm personally not a fan of wasabi, especially the artificial type, but this is different. It is so fresh and fragrant and definitely elevated your entire rice bowl. For dessert, we're going to be trying the coconut balancing cat pudding. It does seem a little bit gimmicky, but so much fun and entertaining too. This is essentially a blank canvas. Use some of the edible paint and let your imagination flow and bring out your inner artist. This reminds me of my childhood experience. I loved drawing when I was a kid and I still do a little bit today and this brought back a moment of joy. Overall, this pudding is on the thicker side. That's not a bad thing. The texture is a lot more firm, very similar to a panna cotta. And it's not too sweet, similar to your classic Japanese desserts. Overall, we really enjoyed that meal. The tempura was well done. The outer crust was um, a little bit on the thick side, but overall not greasy. The inner elements, the eel, the seafood, the chicken, all the vegetables were cooked just right, meaning not overcooked, not undercooked. The udon was nice and briny and very creamy as well. On top of the great fry work, the staff was so welcoming and friendly. We had a great time. For the next stop, we're going to Koputa and Okami in Redmond. They have two different branches, the first one in Seattle, and this is the newest one. This is another first come, first serve type of restaurant, unless you have a big party and call to make a reservation. We are here at 5 p.m. to avoid the long lines. Their menu is not too big, not too small. They focus on katsu and various forms of katsu and different kind of cuts as well. They also have some off menu new items and they look really exciting. Oh man, they all look great. We're gonna go with the KNO Karage. Instead of using classic chicken, they're using the Kurobuta pork loin cap to make their karage. The texture of the batter is on the firmer end. It is not your classic light and airy. It's a little bit more crunchy and dense. The pork itself is nice and juicy and very succulent and pork forward. Imagine the rib cap from a ribeye roast. Kurobuta pork is known as the wagyu of pork. Imagine how juicy and succulent this thing is. You will see four kinds of katsu or pig types, Iberico, Kurobuta, Rosu, or Hire. The Iberico type comes from Iberian pork from Spain. They're acorn fed, giving them that nice nutty flavor. Uh, they're also free range too, so this is a premium cut. 
The Kuro Buta, also known as a black pig, comes from the Berkshire County, so it's also known as the Berkshire Pork. It has a high level of fat and marbling and thought to be very juicy and succulent. So therefore, they've been known as the Wagyu of pork. Together, the Kuro Buta and Iberico are both premium cuts. Rosu is juicy and very fatty and has a very prominent pork flavor. Hide, on the other hand, is the leaner version. It has less to like minimal fat compared to Rosu. For the first dish, we're gonna try the Katsunabe with the Kurobuta pork. We're also trying the Katsudong using the Iberico pork. This katsudong is cooked in egg sauce and served over a very savory rice. This is surprisingly crispy even though it is sitting in a pot of boiling broth. And the pork is nice and juicy as expected given the high fat ratio. There's good variety from shiitake, shimeji mushrooms, to cabbage, seaweed, eggs in a very savory dashi. Even the rice component is nicely seasoned. Not only do you have the sauce from the katsu egg mixture, but also other forms of herbs and aromatics too. We also recommend the tomato and cheese and also katsu curry. In the tomato sauce, you have the addition of miso, which bumps up the umaminess, and also in the curry, they've added chocolate. The interior is nice and juicy. The pork is cooked just right, with the outer being crispy and not over fried and greasy. For the next stop, we head to Fob Sushi Bar in South Lake Union, Seattle. This is definitely one of my to-go options if I want to eat out for lunch. This is a pay per pound type of restaurant, $14.99 per pound, and they offer three different tray sizes, small, large, and a to-go paper box option. Pick a pair of tongs, tray size, and you're good to go. I love their variety and also their creativity. You have the standard classics, but also fun and creative roles. There is a role combination for every person. Imagine mashing up a variety of ingredients from tempura shrimp, salmon, tuna, to like crab, unagi, avocado, eel sauce, you name it. If you're a traditionalist, don't worry. You have the classics from salmon to seared salmon to unagi to mackerel to surf clam to like a scallop to um, let's see a squid to yellowtail. You name it. This is a little over a pound, so I paid approximately 17 for it. Not too bad. And with this variety, I can't find this anywhere else. It's really hard not to over order here. I got some of my favorites from unagi, seared salmon, scallop to yellowtail. I also love their adventurous rolls. So anything with like a tempura to unagi sauce, unagi seared salmon, salmon tuna, I'm willing and love to try it. 
overall, I really like their fish quality. I think the highlight for me is that variety. The rice, though, is a little bit on the acidic side, meaning a little bit too sour for me. What do you think of these restaurants so far? Would you go to them? Any good Japanese restaurants to recommend in the Seattle or greater Seattle area? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. Please like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.